So let's put all the things together on a real example and see how it works. Enough theory. Let's do some practice. So this is the slide that was shown by Mendoza on the strategy on how to do the seismic. We are going to use the strategy. We are going to use hinges in the columns for now to do this example. And we are going to take the project from the DWPH design division, standard drawings, and we are trying to this is, because we want to take a simple project because we want to demonstrate the application of the process. So we create the model. So this is the workflow. First part, we can use CSI Bridge Express because it's very easy to model. I think we can create the model 15 minutes that he can he could create this model from the drawings from the DBWH in 15 minutes using CSI Bridge Express. And then we transfer that model after the design and everything, we transfer it to CSI Bridge main and do the seismic evaluation. So it's a two-step approach. Design, first approach, modeling design quickly, do everything, BOQ, all that done. Once you're satisfied, you take that output to CSI Bridge main and do the seismic evaluation. And that's what we are going to do now. Okay, so that's the bridge model. You can see looks very real with the rendering and textures and all. This is an output from CSI Bridge Express for that model with the pile cap. By the way, we did not have a pile cap with chamfer and we did not have the pile cap with, with um, piles which are not regularly symmetrically arranged in our library. So when we got the DPWH drawings, we added that component. So now we have that component. So now we can handle pile caps of this configuration. So you can see that up, up, up is the drawing, below is a output from the program. They look very, very similar, geometrically complete, almost identical. You have the elevation of the bridge, you have the elevation from the program. Once again, they look compatible. So they're geometrically complete models. And then from there, we will move on to the actual analysis. So you get the analysis model. This is created by the program automatically. And then you run it, you go to the design, you finish with, with that. And then we go to the seismic evaluation. So seismic evaluation, we will follow these steps. Because this is hard. It's not, there's no shortcut, unfortunately, for that yet. And they probably there shouldn't be because this is a serious business. So we use two guidelines, force-based design, and then we use the alternate displacement-based control design. So both all these guidelines are used for doing this work. And then just a comparison between the low-rise building, short-span beam, and the mid-rise building, medium-span, and high-rise building, and long-span in terms of the dynamics. And we have seen that in the morning, that, that they are relatable in terms of the natural period so if you, you know, we have thumb rules for natural period for building zero point, you know, number of stories divided by 10. So similar thumb rules exist for bridges also. So that's the hinges in the, in the beam and the building. We put hinges in the beams in the bridge. We put the hinges in the column uh, that we can't do that because the substructure is so big. And then let's go ahead. So that's the workflow on the left hand side, seismic evaluation. Step by step, we will go. So that's the response spectrum analysis, step number one which we will do in CSI Bridge Express. So you can do that in CSI Bridge Express because response spectrum is, is already done. So you can just choose and be done with it. You can look at the response and that's done. So that part is over. Next, you transfer the model from CSI Bridge Express to CSI Bridge Main. So in CSI Bridge Express, there's a option that transfer this model to CSI Bridge. So it will transfer the mesh that it generated to the CSI bridge main so that you can continue the work from there. So the left hand side is a model in CSI bridge express. Right hand side is the same model transferred automatically to CSI bridge main. So you don't have to enter any data again. It's automatically transferred. So you have that. And next, the reinforcement in the CSI bridge express is already defined and updated. So you can use that in reinforcement information to create your hinges and create your nonlinear data in the CSI bridge main because the reinforcement is already available and it is already designed. Now you put those hinges, now this is CSI bridge main. You can see many forms to fill here. We don't have AI there yet, but you can, you can enter all this data, create the shear hinges, create the PM hinges, get the data from the, the, from the column and put everything, create the, the, the force reflection curves, create all this the data for, the, for that one. 
we are trying to automate this also so that it can be automatically generated and we hope we will do it soon and then you create the hinge properties at attach that data to those and then here are the hinge properties and then you apply the axial force because you need that for the moment curvature curve so you take the axial force from the dead load put it here and then you create complete your definition of the hinges and from there you have the information complete and you give all the you know um, performance evaluation numbers there define the displacement control everything so there's a lot of data a lot of work to be done in 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 the program for the defining this information and then you assign those hinges to the columns both the pm hinges and the shear hinges and then the model is ready and now we can run it and we can run it for many things now because the equation that we have is the one that we are going to use you can see here shear hinges in the middle moment hinges at the top and bottom or only bottom up to you and then you define the pushover so first we will do pushover analysis so you define the pushover parameters and you put the direction of the pushover one in x one in longitudinal one in transverse you create the case you provide all the data so all the data is highlighted here and then you run it so you can see here the pushover is being done and is running now along linear curve it's put in the negative direction and you can see the formation so what you can what you have seen is that the first part of the design is easy this normal design could be done very quickly but when it goes to seismic evaluation then it needs much more data and much more work to be done to complete a nonlinear model with all the input that you need create all the load cases for that and to be able to run that so so what we, we what we can do after that is that once we have the data ready then we can run the pushover in the two directions one in the longitudinal direction and one in the transverse direction so you can see the hinging and you can get the force at the level so you can see that is fine so we can see the hinges formed at that level as we as the the we push the structure so we can do we can get this one next one we do the next slide in the other direction in the transverse direction so you can see here that now the hinges are being formed in the transverse direction we push the bridge once longitudinally and we push the bridge in the other direction using the corresponding uh, model model response so you can get the hinge deformation and hinge state in the pushover curve as we run it so that means now the pushover analysis the nonlinear static analysis is done response spectrum is done so two analysis out of that have been done and we have got some useful information which i will show you in a minute because we have the we have defined the the nonlinearity so we can run that now we can compare so moment has reduced from linear to nonlinear a lot and shear has reduced from nonlinear to linear from linear to nonlinear a lot and i will show you in graph later so you can now easily compare what is the nonlinearity benefit how much nonlinearity helped us to reduce the base shear in the shear in the column which is what we want to do because we don't want column failure failure in shear so we can get that through this reduction easily these numbers and then you can see that reduction from that one that we were talking about so now we were able to get the red line through pushover that we didn't have before the linear line from response spectrum is already there so now we can compare the linear versus nonlinear and find the difference between them so we have now completed that simulation and now you can compare linear and nonlinear reduction in terms of the demand from there to there in both directions and y x direction y direction and so we now have the results linear push linear time history so we also run the linear time history now because the data is available so we input the ground motion matching with the response spectrum and then we run linear time history so we can compare now linear linear response spectrum and pushover so we get those curves so linear pushover linear time history nonlinear pushover nonlinear time history so that's the difference coming from the nonlinearity so we are able to capture now the nonlinear reduction in the bridge um, that we started with earlier so the two direction response is quite different
which is expected because in one direction you have a frame one direction you have a cantilever so the capacity to carry force in two direction is significantly different because of the frame action in one direction and cantilever action in the other direction so that can also compare the two directions the force deformation curves okay now we come to the hinge deformations so you can see the hinge deformations in each case and the deformation control deformations and so on so these are the limits for immediate occupancy life safety based taken from buildings similar limits can be done for bridges okay now let's come to the next and the last second last part nonlinear time history analysis because now we have the ground motions already we have the nonlinearity already now what we need to do is to run a nonlinear time history analysis because all the data is available so we do that let's do that so for that first thing is we define the ground motions which we got which are and then we scale them to match with the response spectrum we get those scaled ground motions here we just run one but you can run more and then we assign them into the uh, specific load 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 cases time history analysis and then we specify damping and so on all the parameters needed and then so now you can see as the ground motion is moving you can see the movement of the structure happening at the same time and we should see how it it will move on it's not in, in sync but you you can see the, the yeah the, the hinging and then the failure of the column in that one so you can now observe the actual nonlinear time history um response from the bridge for the same nonlinear model that we made by applying the ground motion so let's go to the next the, the other the other one so now we can compare the reduction in the response moment at different time steps between the linear and the nonlinear because you have a response from linear time history at the same time step and you have a response from nonlinear time history at the same time step so you can see the reduction so you can see here the the orange line is linear the blue line is nonlinear so that means you can get the plot of any quantity over time as the ground ground, ground is shaking so you can get all this data and you can compare so now there is so much to compare because now you have linear time history you have nonlinear time history you have pushover you have response spectrum and you can keep on doing that you know as much time as you have to keep comparing different quantities displacements moment shear uh, energy whatever so that was the sort of completion of the all of the things that we wanted to discuss in the bridge response the last item that we want to also show is the application of the multi support excitation this is an interesting phenomena which is not necessarily done but this means that the ground motion arrival time or is not the same at various part of the structure because in a traditional ground motion analysis the program will assume that all supported nodes which are are receiving the same ground displacement ground motion at the same time but in reality that is not true for for multiple reason one is that you may have soil layers different from the bedrock so the ground motion progressed from the bedrock to each level may not be the same secondly the the bridge is very long so along the length you have variation of the height of the, the once again bedrock so the ground motion again is not arriving at each support at the same time they are out of phase slightly by a small fraction so each support may be may be receiving the, the input at different times because it's a long bridge and the wave is moving so you can do that but it's not easy because there is no simple way to do this um so you have to convert that into a, a displacement time time history applied individually to each look each support by yourself because you have to then remove the traditional support and do that with this one so we convert the acceleration to velocity to displacement and from that you you create a load case apply the load attached to the displacement time history and then you run it so it becomes a direct integration 
of the same thing using the 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 full nonlinear ground motion equation nonlinear equation but not with the ground motion but with the external force ft the first equation that I, I showed so with that you can then run the same model so here we converted the ground motion now to displacement time histories individually applied at each base which are not in sync anymore so when you arrival time is zero arrival time is 0 0.2 second arrival time is 0 0.4 second and so the ground motion is arriving the wave is arriving at different foundations different bends at different times so that kind of this could be done vertically this could be done horizontally in any case that we want and then we can run it so you specify that function and then from that create the load cases so now you can see that because of that the movement is much different from the assumption that everything is moving together so now this is the the impact of the multi support excitation in a bridge which a long span or which long length or which with two two parts very far across a valley or something like that so this is just a simulation in fact um, it will depend on how much difference between the arrival time is so that's the ultimate seismic analysis or evaluation that you can do but as you can do as you can see it can be done within the same two tools. We started with a very simple model and we ended up with multi support excitation analysis with nonlinear effects and everything in place. Right? So, with that, I think I will say that we have come to the last step, final design, which should be reviewed by engineers to make sure that everything is okay. The program cannot help there. So, you are still in charge. So, you should look at everything and, and say that it is okay. Thank you so much.